Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Now, come to my weekly lesson again on YouTube. Um, this uh, uh, this week's topic is uh, going to be called the transition to adulthood. Okay. Now, as a learner, uh, they continue the journey into adulthood. There is an abundance of new things uh, emerges like programmatic and philosophy. Uh, philosophical, uh, which are essential from uh, for an understanding of the underlying cognitive and emotional processes, uh, the research according to work 2005. So throughout this transition, the learning could involve in new uh, skills, behavior, and social roles that are developmental, requiring a significant change in one's perspective or process of meaning making. So how an adult educator cope with this? So there are some helpful hints according to Malian in 2005 as well. So number one, meeting the learners' immediate needs during the transition. Number two, promoting developmental change by challenging student things beyond. Number three, supporting developmental change by challenging the student to think outside their current frame of uh, reference. So uh, today's topic, uh, I'm going to divide it into three sections. The first one is ageism, and the second one is Synops 3 uh, additional system of learning and finally is a spiritual transition okay first uh, ageism so the widespread of ageism calls for adult educators to come forward to design reach out and plan programs for this age uh, cohort so according to Eisen 2005 he quote be flexible and resourceful in combining educational concepts and techniques in new ways and uh, grabs the opportunity to help uh, combat the widespread of uh, ageism. Okay, now the ageism part is a short one. Now, I'll come to my second section is uh, CNO's three additional system of learning. So, CNO 2005 suggests three other systems of education, uh, which provide broader access uh, for the learner to integrate his or her transforming self. Number one. He used, uh, he, he introduced shamanism. So, what is shamanism? Shamanism is a, a traditional Latin American individual uh, who has a skill to make use of objects such as feather, uh, boy eggs, drums, or eggs, you know, to trigger learners' cognitive uh, system for learning. So, these objects help the client uh, to interact with the traditional and social worlds with identity and cause uh, existential meaning uh, congruent with his or her life stages okay now second one he introduced the Chinese medicine so the practitioners uh, use the acupuncture or acupressure or shiatsu uh, oriental hypology or other body work systems to facilitate the uh, locked and disturbed uh, energy flow through a person so the blockage of energy flow uh, through uh, which hinder a person's learning like physically or psychologically emotionally or spiritually and this that is the health developmental and other psychological issues um, uh, recent history and social interactions and spiritual dilemmas uh, that can influence the energy balance of a person all right the third one that he introduced is meditation so meditation throughout the meditation that is uh, quietly sitting with focused attention and peripheral awareness of uh, passing thoughts and emotions uh, one away the ideas the feelings and the images are uh, within in uh, some within uh, one's body and the process of uh, meditation uh, reduces stress and increases self-awareness like and uh, which uh, psychologically and developmentally so meditation also uh, something to do with uh, reflection from the past okay now uh, Wolf in 2005 suggests that um, uh, there must be a time when we need to uh, reflect on our past in order to have um, continuous learning so a period of transition which we call and reflecting the old events can facilitate our learners to differentiate uh, meaning making and for growth all right also by reflecting on the right journals right written uh, narratives and um, the oral story of life experiences we can optimize our learning experiences all right so this description is often a philosophy of life uh, a stance for meeting life's challenges 
Now come to the final um, section of uh, my topic uh, this week is spiritual transition. So the creative uh, exper- experiences in art, music, and poetry can be uh, a strong influence on spiritual formation and adult learning. So uh, it also emphasizes the uh, outside hallway, in, uh, which is inside a church where uh, members could experience the uh, accessible, private, and collective meaning, then reconstruct and reorganize in their perspectives. All right. So, church music that is um, the uh, creative experiment in invites and demands um, to look inward, where spiritual formation ideas place. So, spiritual learning and creative construction can uh, in, uh, can help to inform further educational theory and research okay now actually um uh, we, i conclude uh, today's topic now in conclusion today we have learned number one learning could invite um in us in new skills could help us to involve in new skills behaviors and social uh, social roles that are developmental involving the significant change in one's perspective perspective or process of uh, meaning making. Number two, also we learn in transition. We are like travelers on a journey uh, to a progressive place. Number three, we learn occasionally we need to look back to our past so as to embrace the new journey. Number four, we also learn from shamanism, Chinese medicine and meditation that can facilitate our journey of learning into another stage um, with uh, with ease to our uh, physical, psychological, and emotional uh, connections during the process of uh, transition. So finally, we also learn creative arts and music in the church serve as a facilitator in the spiritual development of individual learning process. Okay, let's conclude my today's topic on transition to adulthood. My next topic is uh, the using a brown Brown and Brainer's Ecological System Theory for Observing How a Child Learns. Okay? Stay tuned. Thank you for listening and goodbye.